Hey everyone, I'm CJ, and uh, <laughs> uh, it's been a couple of days uh, since my last video. Um, what can I tell you? Thanksgiving and the holidays, all this family stuff, it uh, didn't leave me a whole lot of time for <laughs> for uh, making all that many videos. But um, one of the things that I noticed over the weekend is that, because at first I thought it was just me, you know, I thought, well maybe this is just a fluke and it's not going to really go anywhere and but it turns out no i'm i'm not the only one noticing this uh your boy zach did a a, a video i guess at this point it was yesterday and he was basically talking about how at this point um i i guess the the uh firmware upgrade has gone out to all the npcs among uh social justice warriors Basically saying that it's time to move on from comics and train their fire on Star Wars. Because at this point, comic books have been not utterly decimated yet because they still exist. Ergo, they haven't been completely decimated yet. But uh, the state of the industry is such that recovery just <laughs> it's just not very likely <laughs> at this point so uh time to uh move on to star wars and let's start calling everybody racist because of something something ahsoka tano and there's just not going to be as much mm, there's not going to be as much fire trained upon the comic book industry going forward as there has been for the past bunch of years all right that's that's the theory and if if your boy Zach was if that was the first time I'd gotten that impression, I don't know if I would believe it. <clears throat> but I uh, I looked at the the usual uh, bunch of uh, websites over the weekend and before he made that video, and it just seemed like there's overall less stupidity going on with the likes of uh, comic book resources or 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 bleeding cool or news around there's just less <laughs> there's just less stupidity and a good example of what i'm talking about kind of like a microcosm of all this is this kind of listicle article that i found that basically lists off the uh, the biggest and most important x-men creators now i can't help thinking because i was I, I sat here and i and i read this article with certain expectations, which is to say, expectations of of what the pre-firmware SJW, like the pre-firmware upgrade uh, SJWs would think were the greatest X-Men creators of all time. And that is kind of what I was expecting to read in this in this listicle. And that was really the reason I even read read this listicle at all. I figured, hey, this is going to be good fodder for a, a video and it is but not for the reasons i thought so <clears throat> basically i'm not gonna keep you in uh, suspense here too much it lists off brian michael bendis louise simonson grant morrison and frank quietly jim lee jonathan hickman who I, i'm gonna be honest with you I've, I, I've never actually read his stuff i've heard good things about his his run i've heard bad things about his run i Honestly, I'm a little more inclined to believe the bad things, but his presence on this list, nevertheless, it makes sense. Even if his run sucked, I mean, it's still written by a bunch of SJWs, so I guess you have to expect something. And then finally, uh, or not finally, but uh, nearing the end, uh, Dave Cockrum, John Byrne, Len Wein, Stan Lee, and Jack Kirby, Chris Claremont, and that's it. That, that, that's the list. Now, ask yourselves this, all right? A year ago, or hell, for that matter, even like a week ago, a bunch of SJWs get together to decide on the most important X-Men creators of all time. Are these really, aside from Jonathan Hickman, are these really the names that you would expect? Well, if we're being honest, no. We would expect them to mm, <laughs> uh, maybe come up with, shall we say, uh, 
more politically correct names. And uh, that obviously is not what's going on here. They, this is a list that, I mean, I guess you can agree or disagree with Jonathan Hickman's place on this list, like the fact that it's on the list at all. But in the main, I mean, I think this is actually a, a pretty defensible list. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, I don't know if I would put him on this list, but I can understand where, where people would make that argument. Or Louise Simonson. I probably would put her on the list, but if someone wanted to leave her off in favor of, oh, I don't like Scott Lobdell or something like that, I don't know if I agree with that, but I can at least see the argument, you know. Uh, but <laughs> all in all, these are actually some pretty some pretty defensible names. And like I say, like two weeks ago, this is not the listicle that you would have gotten. It's not even close. Maybe Jonathan Hickman would have been on that list, but uh, all these other names. No, I just don't, I don't think they would be up there. But the firmware upgrade, it has gone out, and it really does seem like SJWs are going to be training their fire from now on on Star Wars, and so this is the type of, this is the type of comic book content that we can perhaps expect going forward. And just to kind of give you guys an idea of how extensive this is, like I said, this was originally supposed to be the uh, subject of today's video based upon the fact that I was expecting very different names on this list, but obviously that isn't what happened. This is a microcosm of everything else that seems to be going on where a lot of the content and articles and stuff in the shill media, they, they actually look pretty decent. Uh, just taking, like, even Bleeding Cool, which I never recommend reading, but, you know, even Bleeding Cool, I mean, it's really, the, the way their homepage looks right now, it's really not that bad, uh, especially the comic book section. Um, there, there's just some kind of, you know, Chris Claremont explaining what's more important, plot or characters, um, obscure comics talking about Superman, Wonder Woman, and just all these other things, a lot of indie stuff that's going on. It's like, it's really not all that bad right now. And I'm thinking that maybe this is going to be the state of the show media for the six months or however long the industry has left. Maybe this is what we can expect right now. I mean, seriously, the most aggravating thing that... I can see just at a glance is basically uh, Batista uh, shit talking uh, supporters of Donald Trump. And honestly, guys, this is one of the reasons why. Look, I I don't think I've ever said this out loud before, but <laughs> I'm a I really enjoy uh, Zack Snyder's uh, uh, DC films. You know, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. I enjoy both of them. And number one, that's because I just think they're, they're well-made and entertaining movies. But it's like, number two, the people, or most of the people who are the loudest um, opponents and detractors of Zack Snyder's DC films, they're usually the same people who think that Dave Bautista is a talented actor. And so to people like that, I say, get your own house in order first. But, I mean, really, this is about as bad as it gets. Like, at the exact moment that I opened uh, Bleeding Cool this morning, this, this is basically about as bad as it gets. And everything else on here, maybe it's of interest to you, and maybe it's... I mean, I, for one, I'm getting sick to fuck of seeing anything to do with Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> but it's like, apart from that, uh, you know, this business with Dave Batista. apart from that... Um, there's just really not very much going on that offends me right now. And I'm starting to think that, you know what, maybe your boy Zach was right. So, I mean, I guess we'll see. But anyway, so I just want to throw all this out there and see what comes back to me. I'm CJ, and I guess that's that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, comment, like, and share this video because it really helps me out. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Loves Comics.